The prologue of marriage or imitation marriage is often opened with two pieces of cloth, a bed sheet and a curtain. Little Sue was making a bed when the prologue was opened. It can also be said that when the prologue was opened, Xiao Mo was putting the clip rings on the curtains. It's the same thing anyway. Little Sue knelt on the bed, using all of her ten fingers together, looking attentive and patient. She spread slowly, and every move was a new feeling. It was just at the end of September, completely straw mat season, but Little Sue insisted on using a bed sheet. The color of the sheet was pure sea blue. Little Sue smoothed the sea blue textile, plain, ironed, and like an imaginary moment on a clear sea. When the wind and waves stopped under the sun, Little Sue and Xiao Mo were standing on this side and that side of the bed. They faced each other across the sea. The feeling of home was thus produced. No matter how long you want to feel at home, once it comes, you will always be caught off guard, moving deeply and making you unsteady. At this time, a train was passing under the window, and their eyes looked out of the window from the second floor. The train is under the window, ten meters away from them, only separated by a red brick wall. Little Sue had an illusion at a certain moment. The train stood still in her gaze, and it was them who were still traveling. The small loft they rented drove in the opposite direction at every train window. The small building became quiet after the train passed. Little Su and Xiao Mo looked around this wall together. There was no furniture, but the four walls were concrete and real. While looking at them, there was a real sense of being embraced by life. Xiao Mo walked around the bed with the curtains in his hands, and hugged Little Sue, so that her breasts were pressed against his chest. Little Sue kissed Xiao Mo's chin and asked, "Is this love or marriage?" Xiao Mo raised his face, rubbed his chin against Little Sue's forehead, blinked a few times with his single-layer eyelids, and said. Illegal cohabitation. Footsteps sounded on the balcony, sounding like a rough man. A big head protruded through the window, covered with the gray dirt from the railway. The dirty head smiled and said loudly, "Moved here so soon." Xiao Mo walked to the door and greeted the landlord switchman. Master Gang, come to our home. When Xiao Mo said "our home," he glanced at Little Su deliberately. Little Su heard clearly, but pretended not to hear. Little Su pulled her short hair back and turned her face to the side. A small bright spot lit up on the tip of her nose, which was the light produced by the flustered happiness. Master Gong put down the railway wrench, took the homemade brand cigarette handed over by Xiao Mo, and put the light switch wire behind the door frame. He said, "There is no meter. Use the power as you want." Then he took two steps back and unscrewed the faucet on top of the sink. Just let the water go. Master Gong simply walked to the hut at the west end of the balcony. Xiao Mo knew that he was about to demonstrate the toilet tank, so leaned on the door frame and lit a cigarette. The water from the water tank flushed down with Master Gang's urine. A voice came from the bathroom. "This is the bathroom." Master Gang was talking with a cigarette in his mouth, and Xiao Mo could hear it. He began to imagine Master Gang's talking look, with his hands on his lower body, squinting his eyes and crooking his mouth. My house is only one hundred yuan a month. Where can you find it? Master Gun came out of the bathroom, shaking his body and pulling up the zipper. The only thing is train. Master Gun said loudly, "You have to pay at night anyway. It's okay." Xiao Mo followed him with a loud voice and said, "We like trains." Master Gun said with a smile. 
Why are you so loud? I can hear it. Liu Su sat on the inside of the bed, listening to two men talking. She took over the work left by Xia Mo and readjusted the distance between the curtain clip rings. Heard Liu Su's hey at the door, Xia Mo turned around. Liu Su glanced at the south window. Xia Mo threw his cigarette, took a square bench, and hung the curtain on the ladware. A pregnant woman was climbing up the stairs with a bamboo basket in her hand. A cart had just stopped at the stairway behind her, the most common type on stations and platforms. The glass was written with baozi egg and dried tofu in red paint. Behind the pregnant woman was a little girl, who was seven or eight years old, with a vivid look, holding half a cold dog in her hand. Two lips were red because of the cold dog. Standing on the square bench, Xiamo looked at the middle-aged pregnant woman through the window. This angle was too far from normal. The pregnant woman looked up and smiled politely. Master Gan said loudly, "They are here." He walked to the end of the stairs under the window, took out the last meat bun from the bamboo basket, stuffed it in his mouth, and mumbled. Go so fast, Master Gang pouted and turned his head and said to Xia Mo, "My wife Ah Zhuan, that's my baby girl, Little Belle." Xia Mo did not rush to greet. He and Little Su looked at each other. The viewing angle was almost seventy degrees, perfect for expressing doubts. They silently stared at Little Belle and silently at Ah Zhuan's abdomen. Just after climbing the stairs, Ah Juan stood under the window and inhaled heavily. Master Gun happily touched the little bell's cheeks. Little bell's hands were resting on the door frame, with a pair of black eyes facing the two strangers wittily. She grinned with two little rabbit teeth out. Little Sue said, "A beautiful girl." Master Gun said with a smile, "She can call uncle and aunt. She's dumb." Ah Juan said, "I thought you would come tomorrow. I haven't cleaned it up for you." Without getting back to their senses, Xia Mo and Little Su only nodded and smiled. They stood with one high and one low, watching Ah Juan and Little Bell pass the door. Little Su's feeling of vomiting came out of nowhere. She rushed for no reason. Then she covered her mouth and rushed out of the room. She held the sink, bowed her waist, and rushed several times. She vomited out some noises with no substance. Xiamo jumped down and rushed up to pat her on the back. Little Su turned on the faucet, rinsed her mouth with water, straightened up, and just smiled, with a few broken tears on her eyelashes. What's wrong? Little Su said embarrassedly, "I didn't eat anything." Master Gang and Ah Juan had already stopped at the door sill. Four eye sights came back without any sound. Little Su was stunned as soon as she met the pregnant woman's eyes and immediately covered her mouth with her palm. Her eyes alternately looked at the left and right over her palms, quickly and panicky. A few pairs of eyes. All understood. Xia Mo was leaning on the bed, smoked, and it filled the whole room all night. There was no light in the room, but Little Su felt the heavy haze. This breathing sensation was consistent with the visual impressions on both sides of the railroad tracks, which were covered with silty dust. Little Su lay on the inside of Xia Mo, with her head tucked under his armpit. His sweat smelled a little anxiety. It was hot. The bed sheet did not bring sea breeze, only the stuffiness of cotton textiles. Heat. This stuff is annoying, so it goes to your heart after a long time. Xia Mo's right hand was placed on Little Su's abdomen, and his fingers crawled around disorderly, 
boring and helpless, reflecting a bad moment of an unmarried man. Bad men do not lack this kind of moment, and your girlfriend blinks and reports the fruit of your labor with bewildered eyes. She has it. Or she wants to take your hand, press it to her abdomen without thinking, and give you a pair of tearful eyes. There is a subtext. Three simple words. It's all you. Tiamo's left hand was placed on little Su's abdomen, and the color of the night was as heavy as his hand. This was an accident. Tiamo felt that they had a big accident. Little Su felt uncomfortable by the touch of Tiamo's fingers. She rubbed her nose against Tiamo's ribs and whispered, "Stop it." A train came on the rails, which was a passenger train. The train window lights quickly went off on Xiamo's face. Xiamo did not move; only the light on his face flashed around. For a while, Little Su thought he was like a dummy. Little Su pushed him, but he didn't move. She pushed him again, but Xiamo got out of bed and sat boringly in front of the easel at the north window. The canvas was blank, with nothing but textiled lines. Xiamo tried the elasticity of the canvas with his finger. Originally, he planned to start this painting tomorrow, but Little Su's belly was so uncontrollable. It's messed up. Little Su walked behind Xiamo. She knocked over an aluminum pan as she walked. Little Su stood there, waiting for the sound to pass. Little Su stood behind Xiamo and put her hand in Xiamo's hair, slowly pull it again and again. Little Su squatted by Xiamo and asked, "What are you thinking?" Xiamo didn't answer. After a long time, he said, "Money." Little Su said, "I'm going out to work, and you paint. We have talked about it." Xiamo's cigarette butt released a scarlet light in the dark, struggling for a while and then weakened, revealing male fragility and male depression. Xiamo said, "What can you do like this right now? The days to spend money are later. I have to earn a little back anyway." Little Su said. Or you can do it for a few months and earn the money, then come back to paint. Xiamo said, "What is it to earn money? I just want to earn with good looking. I am an artist after all."